be here today. Welcome everyone. Very excited to be here today with Aptera. I am Vanessa Guajardo, CMO and Chief of Staff at U.S. Capital Global. But before we meet our speakers this morning, we're going to kick it off with their amazing video. We have a vision. A vision of a future that runs on sunshine. A future that gives us all greater freedom. Endless opportunity for adventure. And the ability to connect with people and places far and wide. A future that empowers us all to do more with less. One that uses creative energy and solar power to enable our mobility without sacrificing the health of our planet. We, together, can revolutionize the way we move, the way we interact with each other, and the world around us. And together, we can transform the world. With a future-forward mindset and a belief that anything is possible, we can create a better way to move from point A to point B. We believe in harnessing the power of the sun and challenging the status quo and efficiency above all else. We believe that anyone can be a part of our movement, that bringing new ideas and different approaches can inspire our thinking. We believe in making new connections and opening new doors of opportunity. By putting breakthrough solar technology and reimagining the shape of transportation, we can be free. Free to move. Free to create a future of solar mobility that changes the world. We are at Terra. We are the future! Imagine what's next. So let's find out what is next. <laughs> all right, so let's go around and start out with meeting all of our speakers. Um, some of those in the audience are new to what U.S. Capital Global is, as well as what Aptera is. So let's kick it off with Frank. Frank, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Hi, I'm Frank Villarreal, Managing Director and Partner at U.S. Capital Global. Um, my background is with traditional bulls bracket investment banking, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you here today. Beautiful. Thank you, Frank. William, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur that joined U.S. Capital and uh, had the pleasure of meeting the entire team at Aptera and became a super fan. So thrilled to be on this deal. Thank you. Thank you. And Chris and Steve, please tell us about yourselves. Uh, I'm Chris Anthony, co-founder, co-CEO of Aptera. Uh, this is my ninth startup, so I've been through the ringer uh, several times. Um, I was educated in finance um, and started out uh, in the brokerage world and ended up doing some direct public offerings and IPO work uh, before moving on to my own efforts. Um, I had a, a boat company, Epic Boats, uh, built a line of wakeboard boats and then fishing boats, uh, then got into lithium batteries. I have a company I took public, uh, Flux Power, ticker symbol FLUX. Uh, largest supplier of lithium to the logistics world, um, and now jumped into uh, this amazing effort to make the world a more efficient place in terms of transportation with Steve Fambro. Good morning. I'm Steve Fambro. I'm a co-founder, co-CEO of Aptera, along with Chris. Um, my professional training is as an electrical engineer, but I'm this is probably my third startup. Uh, before Aptera, uh, believe it or not, I worked as a farmer for about eight years. Uh, developing a vertical farming technology that ended up taking me to the Middle East, where I worked um, for an ag tech uh, investment fund for a, a family office, uh, the family actually in Abu Dhabi, and um, reunited with Chris. And I moved back to the United States in, in 2019, and uh, that's when we we started Aptera. Yes, the biggest part helped help found Illumina. Uh, DNA company that uh, wow. that made the world's largest DNA synthesizing robots. I was an early employee. I wasn't found. I was a very early employee. <laughs> formed, formed Illumina <laughs> with his great skills. So incredible team here <laughs> amongst us. Um, before we dive into more about Aptera and everything you have underway, uh, Frank, would you be able to tell us about the opportunity that is available to our audience here? 
Sure, Aptera is offering a $60 million convertible note. The term is 24 months. The coupon rate is 12%, and this will convert at a discount of 20% into the next qualified financing event. Beautiful, thank you. And these, this material as well as the deck can be found on the Aptera site. Um, there is an investor button as well as the US <laughs> dot com site so if you want to have the materials in front of you feel free to download them and view as we move along here but with that chris would you like to share your screen and tell us about aptera we would so see everything okay let's see looks perfect okay nice. um Aptera has a, a single mission, and it's to make every journey powered by the sun. Uh, right now, our 400-mile electric vehicle gets about 40 miles from the sun, but our vision of the, of the future for automobiles is the next one will get 60 miles, 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles. Eventually, our goal is to make every journey powered by the sun. So that dictates basically everything we do uh, as a company, how the vehicles are designed, the materials they use, how our own internal processes work, this Relentless focus on efficiency is all grounded on making every journey powered by the sun. A real driver of the shape you see on your screen now. Um, you know, the automotive industry hasn't changed a lot in the last seven or eight decades um, and really evolved from the horse and buggy to the four wheel configuration you see on the roads today. Uh, big blocky SUVs. Uh, and sedans that can use up to 70% of their fuel at highway speeds, just pushing air out of the way. So when you fundamentally rethink how transportation can be made more efficient and thus powered by the sun, you end up with something that looks more like this than your traditional SUV or sedan. And of course, every everybody knows with electric vehicles, the most expensive part is the batteries. So how do you make a vehicle with less batteries to go the same distance or greater? You increase its efficiency. And primarily that's lowering the drag which means you have this nice aerodynamic shape like Aptera has, and you use lightweight materials like our carbon SMC composite. So if you want to make electric vehicles proliferate by making them more affordable, by making smaller battery packs, you have to be grounded in efficiency. And so that's, that's how we do it. Which also helps our profit model. The, uh, the less it costs to build the vehicle, uh, the more margin you can charge on the back end, and still have an affordable vehicle to the mass market, the better it is holistically for the whole business model. So uh, solar power is what makes Aptera different. There are lots of EVs in the space. Aptera is the only solar electric EV. And it's not an afterthought. It's not a decorative panel that goes on the roof, or it's not something that's a gimmick. It is the fundamental part of our IP portfolio. It's, it's a very rich IP portfolio. Most of that goes to uh, protecting how we make panels in three dimensions, curved, and make them automotive grade, lightweight, affordable, et cetera but also the high voltage electronics required to integrate it with the battery pack. Um, having, having the charging on the vehicle basically means that most people will never have to plug it in. They can simply park it on the curb or in their parking lot, and most of the daily driving miles uh, will, be, will be covered by the sun. So that's a big advantage to the, to the product. Okay, beautiful. And Steve, I hear you loud and clear. Chris, you cut out a little bit. So if you can move oh. maybe slightly to the, the mic, just a little more. You were nice and loud at first, and then you freed it away. <laughs> uh, we think it's amazing that we can provide most of people's daily driving with just power from the sun. It gives us the most ubiquitous charging network in the world. Anywhere photons hit the ground, uh, your app tear is being charged. So it also allows us to skip by uh, a lot of the infrastructure needs that other EV companies uh, face. Uh, if you build an EV truck, uh, it takes a lot of power to uh, to charge that vehicle. So uh, whether it be a very expensive home charger or whether it be the infrastructure required for you to take a road trip, uh, the Aptera simply doesn't need it. Uh, the charging infrastructure is built right on the vehicle. Uh, to date, we've raised over $135 million uh, we raised about 115 million of that from the crowd. 17,000 individual investors have invested uh, in Aptera. Um, we're quite quite proud of that success. Uh, and 20 million have come from uh, VCs, uh, family offices, high net worth uh, individuals. Uh, but that's really what's gotten us 
here today is the uh, the enthusiastic support that we've gotten for this idea that transportation should be made more efficient and transportation should be powered by the sun. Amazing. <laughs> Along with that, we also have 48,000 plus uh, pre-orders now. Uh, 48,563 this morning um, was what I saw, um, which uh, which really shows that people really want uh, our product. Uh, when you look at that in totality, uh, that's over $1.7 billion uh, in potential revenue. Um, and that's why we're here talking to all of you investors today uh, to fund the production of this vehicle and get as many on the road as possible, as quickly as possible. Uh, we also had an accelerator program where we took the first 2000 delivery slots uh, and we said, if you want these very special uh, vehicles, these first 2000 Apteras, uh, we would love your financial support. Uh, and we let people basically uh, bid on those slots. Uh, and the highest slot was a million <laughs> something, Blake. Uh, the, the highest slot uh, cost over a million dollars, four million actually. Um, and uh, the lowest investment was $10,000 just to get a chance at those slots. So Yeah, and they're not buying down the price of the car. They're buying their position in the delivery order. Yeah, so it didn't pay anything on the vehicles, just an investment in the company. But, uh, but their belief uh, that we're on the right track and their desire for those first 2,000 vehicles uh, raised us almost $40 million with, uh, with that just that uh, accelerator program, uh, which is great. Uh, some of our amazing milestones, our patent portfolio. Yeah, we started in the very beginning. Uh, you know, we took some, we took a few from uh, my time in biotech uh, at Illumina, um, and we hired full-time patent counsel. So we had patent counsel embedded, actually sitting with the engineers, uh, with a very specific goal of not only building up the patent portfolio, but you know, creating uh, the necessary blocking uh, to prevent others from coming in and, and copying what we're doing. So we're very proud of that. We've been working on this nonstop for over three years. Uh, Damien is still, you know, working uh, for us and engaged with the engineers. So we think Aptera as a as an IP creation company uh, is something that's just fundamental to what we've been doing. And we're even working with different um, potential customers to license some of our technology as well. Uh, and monetizing some of our solar into the uh, ground supports equipment arena mm -hmm. um, and also uh, talking about how to monetize our battery packs uh, now that we have the generous support of the California um, Energy Commission to uh, to build a battery line here in Southern California. Our battery modules are very robust and could be used in a lot of different industries. Uh, we also had our patent portfolio valued by a big four firm. Uh, it is a significant portion of our current uh, pre-money valuation. So uh, that's nice to have that confidence. Uh, we built five uh, uh, running prototypes that we have right now. Um, we're starting our production intent builds now. So that's when we start the, the validation durability testing to uh, launch into full scale um, manufacture of the vehicle next year. Uh, and we have an amazing team here uh, with Blake and Tom. Uh, Blake, uh, our VP of finance, has an amazing background in prepping companies to become public. Um, so, you know, we're ready to be uh, regular filers. Uh, we already have an ERP system uh, in NetSuite uh, where we pull our financials. Uh, so we're, you know, unlike a lot of other companies, um, I, I think positioned uh, to be public very quickly. Um, and we have a great lobbying firm uh, in DC um, and California um, on occasion uh, in the Livingston Group, uh, great government relations uh, and supplier relations with, uh, with amazing connections around the world. And that team uh, really was essential helping us uh, compete and win the uh, California Energy Commission grant, the $21 million grant. Um, same team is, is also helping us with some of the efforts around the world. Uh, our capital plan right now is uh, the $60 million raise that we're executing uh, now. It uh, builds our validation durability vehicles. Uh, it completes the rest of the uh, integration uh, and ED&T work we have to do with our suppliers uh, and then gets us into low volume production. Uh, it unlocks some, uh, some grants and other loans um, that we're uh, working on. Uh, and then we can position ourselves for growth past that, which is really the 170 million and 220 million uh, in the out years you see on this plan here. We've uh, gathered amazing partners uh, across the world. Um, uh, CPC Group in Italy, uh, Monroe and Associates, uh, lean manufacturing experts that invested in us very early on. Uh, Cherry Automotive, uh, the largest vehicle exporter from China, invested in us uh, and we licensed two of their vehicle platforms. Uh, but other uh, 
great partners as well. Yeah, two interesting things about these partners. Uh, they they really helped us co-design and build some of the IP together. So for example, CPC Group, we have the largest carbon fiber SMC mass produced tub, the bottom structure of the vehicle ever made in the history of the world. Um, also with Herschler, uh, we will have the largest solar panel ever made on a vehicle of any kind and one of the largest single solar panels ever made. It's not the largest, but it's it's just about the largest solar panel ever made. So uh, these vendors are helping us really uh, push the envelope with technology to uh, help us achieve these remarkable numbers that you see. And great companies like uh, Yazaki, they're the largest wiring harness uh, producer in the world. They're on half of every new car sold. Um, you know, one of the biggest failure modes of new vehicles uh, are the connectors uh, and switches in the vehicle. So having an amazing partner there is great. Uh, Roush helped us with um, suspension design and also in, uh, closure design. And although we're not getting too deep in IP, one of our big portions of the IP portfolio is a technology that we develop and are deploying on Aptera that reduces the number of connectors on the vehicle by a factor of two or three. So lower cost, lower weight, fewer failure points. Looks very cool, too. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> um, our CPC partnership in Italy um, has progressed over the last two years. Uh, it's where we've sunk uh, most of our capital expenditure so far uh, because uh, the lead time for some of these tools is, is immense. You have to get a 400,000 pound block of steel from Germany. You have to give it get it over to Italy. You have to mill two matching sets. You got a top and a bottom and they sandwich together. Um, and, you know, typical lead time just for the big steel blocks is over a year, um, you know, and the whole program lead time can be closer to two years. That's right. Yeah, it was the first big check we wrote, I think, was uh, just to buy the steel from the tools. It was a uh, it was a big check. Uh, but now those tools are done and you can see the parts on your screen. Uh, we've actually fully pressed uh, the first 16 vehicles in our validation and durability program. So uh, those parts. Uh, are in Italy, and some of them are headed uh, our way here in California, uh, and we're beginning the effort to build our first uh, validation uh, production intent vehicles now. And also the next few. Yeah, they're, doing, they're setting everything up for that as well. Yep, yep. Um, we'll be exciting. So one of the, the key differentiators between Aptera and any other, you know, regular car company, it starts at the very beginning of the body. A typical car, you know, whether it's a, a Tesla or BYD or whatever, um, they're going to have almost 200 parts in the vehicle structure. Each one of those parts have to be inventoried. They have to be checked for tolerance. They have separate tools. Uh, they have to be moved through the process. Aptera has fewer than 10 structural parts, only six key structural parts. So that means far fewer tools, uh, which means we're able to recover that uh, capital cost for amortization much more quickly uh, than if we tooled a typical automotive body and white. But it also means uh, a greater chance uh, or as fewer chances rather of problems with the build of the vehicle with misalignment with parts not fitting etc because every single part is tooled on both sides and they are designed to key in together so fewer parts parts that are, are far dimensionally more stable than the stamped steel parts and fewer things to inventory fewer tools it just means it's a radically different process with lower capex and a much faster capital recovery time it also yields a, a very strong and lightweight body. Um, I weigh roughly as much as this whole body structure, about 200 pounds, cool. uh, <laughs> which, uh, which means they're all human positionable. Um, you don't need a lot of robotics uh, to put these uh, parts in place. Uh, and there's no welding. Um, uh, California is a difficult place to get uh, permits for uh, anything that has emissions and welding is one of those. Another big one is paint. Uh, we don't actually paint these body structures. Uh, these body structures get a, a vinyl paint protection film. Uh, it's basically a sticker. Uh, if you want a red one, we put a red sticker on the outside. If you want a white one, we put a white sticker on the outside. Uh, but those films are made in a very environmentally friendly way. Um, and it means we don't have to have spray permits in California to actually paint these vehicles. Um, over half of your CapEx for a modern automotive plant can go just to the paint shop. So get rid of paint you've eliminated half of your CapEx need to build a new um, automotive factory. And just one more thing. Uh, when we're talking about carbon sequestration, uh, the, the best way to do that is to never burn the oil in the first place, right? Um, and so all of these vehicle parts start their life as oil. Um, and this is one of the main interests that we have in the UAE and Saudi Arabia is this idea of, of 
of the new steel of, of structural materials that they can make without even having to burn oil, but using the oil to make the material and sequestering that carbon forever in the part of the vehicle. Carbon fiber part, goodness. Um, you put it all together and you have a uh, vehicle program that has much lower uh, manufacturing cost, uh, something that's really propelled by the integration of uh, solar um, and something that's uh, amazingly uh, lightweight uh, and we feel uh, beautiful, uh, which compared to the competition gives you the best energy per mile. Uh, we use about a quarter of the energy per mile versus uh, an average EV. Yeah. Let's just say one of the most common questions people ask is like, well, why don't they put solar cells on other vehicles? The answer is it wouldn't really do anything. It would be almost like a gimmick uh, because those those vehicles use so much energy. You could cover them in solar cells and it wouldn't really add anything appreciable to the range of the vehicle. But because Aptera is so efficient, we add meaningful range to the vehicle. Uh, means a lower cost uh, to own. It means for us on the manufacturing side, a lower cost to build. Uh, and obviously, we've designed it to be uh, super safe. Oh, Chris, you faded away again. Steve's still loud. Uh, and you are. Awesome. <laughs> Um, interesting microphone on this, but uh, the safety and high performance aspects of the vehicle are apparent. Uh, speaking of safety, uh, this is one of the areas that we really concentrate on. Yeah, Aptera, you know, it, it's because we chose three wheels to make it more efficient. Uh, the government calls it a motorcycle. Uh, but so you think, well, what, what safety things you have to do for a motorcycle? Not much, really. So we go well above that. We actually look to the automotive standards, the FMBSS, uh, which is why our vehicle has airbags, which is why it's being crash tested. So it has all the typical modern safety features you would expect of a car, even though it's a motorcycle. Um, and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's not something that we use as an excuse, rather. We use it as an opportunity to make a motorcycle the safest it could ever be. We also have amazing additional safety features that other people don't have. Our heads up vision system to give you a 180 degree view of what's going on behind the vehicle, but right in front of the steering wheel. Um, and other great uh, tools that, that allow you to be safe. Uh, we have an integrated autopilot system, uh, which is uh, pretty amazing too. Um, and we, we, we feel that the Aptera is gonna be um, pretty impressive to drive. Uh, focusing away from the product and more on the business model now, uh, our unit economics, um, as you can see, the, the first vehicles that we build uh, are a little more expensive, but as we scale our manufacturer and start to open up a couple more plants, uh, we'll have a plant here in Southern California, probably a plant in Northern California, uh, spread across the USA, uh, Texas, Virginia, maybe uh, uh, maybe um, places like your hometown in Georgia, uh, but also overseas in uh, places like the Netherlands and Spain and Germany um, and possibly Australia. Um, there's That's how we'll build out um, our volume over time. Instead of building one mega plant in one spot, we'll have several plants um, all over the world. But as we get over 50,000 units, uh, we expect our cost per vehicle to dip below $30,000. Uh, and we expect for our sales price to uh, ever increase uh, as we get more publicity, as people learn more about solar mobility, as people get more attuned to how much um, money uh, they can save with the Aptera and how enjoyable it can be. Uh, but this is how that plays out over time and through our volumes. Um, our sources and uses for uh, this particular raise, um, it's, uh, it's a lot of this uh, convertible note, uh, but it's also some of the uh, CEC grant uh, that we've already been granted, uh, some equipment financing for things in the facility uh, that can be re reused by other facilities and we can get financed, um, and uh, the total plan uh, to get this vehicle um, into manufacturers, about $114 million, uh, of which $60 million of it is the note that we're talking about on this call. And the 60 million unlocks the other things. Yeah, the 60 million unlocks the other uh, parts of our financing plan. Uh, we've really broken um, our efforts into three different phases. Uh, the first phase, uh, which is kind of half of this initial plan, is to uh, finish the first production intent vehicles, uh, get into validation and durability testing, uh, get through crash testing, uh, which will show the public uh, so they know how our vehicles uh, do in those situations um, and really set us uh, on a path uh, to proving out our manufacturing facility, which is phase two, uh, completing all of our tooling and EDT, uh, setting up the manufacturing line, uh, producing our first uh, real production vehicle off that line, uh, and then starting a low volume production 
Uh, and phase three is really uh, scaling that to higher volume production, which is adding a second shift uh, to our first uh, low volume production line uh, and then producing as many vehicles as we can as quickly as we can. Yeah, on that shift, uh, it's important to know Monroe and Associates, uh, esteemed uh, company in the automotive world, they designed uh, with our engineers, they designed our factory force so it could be copied and pasted anywhere in the world in less than 100,000 square feet we can make about 10,000 vehicles uh, per year per shift. So with this model that they have, which has very little capital improvement to the building, we can move into virtually any leased building around the world that's you know roughly 8,000 square meters or 100,000 square feet uh, and produce 20,000 cars a year with two, shift, two shifts. Uh, we've got an amazing team here. Um, our chief of design has worked on some amazing programs for uh, Porsche and Toyota and others. Um, our CFO, Tom, um, has amazing uh, go public experience uh, and a coach or VP of engineering uh, has helped us uh, with our European connections. Uh, and Jim, our uh, head of uh, Asian Pacific operations, has helped us with like the cherry relationship and growing that. But this is the team that's going to make it happen. And that's it. That's all we got. Thank, Thank you. you so much for that. <laughs> the very comprehensive presentation. So appreciate that. Um, actually, uh, Frank, we're going to touch on the opportunity one more time here just for the audience. And I did drop the link to these materials in the chat here. But the chat is very active. So I'll drop it in one more time for the audience. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so again, the opportunity is $60 million convertible note. The term is 24 months, and that pays a coupon rate of 12% accrued. Conversion discount is 20%, and that is applicable to the next qualified financing event. Beautiful. And with that, I'm going to open it up for some questions here, and um, specifically questions around the current capital raise. <laughs> I know there's a lot of questions here, um, i.e., can you get the car unwrapped or um, it is unpainted? So that's beautiful. Looks like there's a lot of hype for unwrapped cars. Uh, pretty cool. <laughs> but, put a tear wrap on it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Janine had one here. Of what is the minimum investment amount on the raise? Which is a great question. Be a question for Frank and uh, Willie. The minimum is 50000 Beautiful. Thank you for that. And a couple questions around the safety test results. Uh, we will publish the safety test results. We'll show videos of the safety test. Um, you know, we try to be a very open company. We've, we've kept our community informed on kind of every step of our evolution uh, and safety testing is a big next step. Yes. Yeah, so we've, we've been uh, to the, the magic of software. We've been crash testing uh, for the past year virtually with software simulation. So that's how we uh, were able to finalize the frame design, the thickness of the different materials, et cetera, by doing that crash simulation. So we have to, of course, follow it up with real vehicles in order to calibrate the airbags and make sure all of that works as designed. But uh, when we do that uh, later uh, next year, we'll be sharing that information. Beautiful. Thank you. And it looks like, actually, uh, this is an interesting one. I'm just concerned about uh, temperature and ice buildup. Um, for those snow bunnies out there, how does the, the vehicle perform in, in quote, unquote, weather? We, uh, yeah. so two answers. Uh, we haven't done long-term uh, winter testing yet. We have driven in the snow when we were at St. Moritz, Switzerland. Uh, we drove it on a frozen lake and drove it around the snow, but that's that's not a winter development plan. Uh, but uh, our engineers are aware, um, many of them from Michigan, you know, how ice and snow build up inside fender wells and things like that. So it's something they're aware of. We just haven't done that testing yet. And you will have the option in those conditions, I believe, of removing the wheel pads. So for the few months a year where that's an issue, uh, it might be appropriate just to remove the wheel pads. Okay, beautiful. So anyone that wants to head up to Tahoe, <laughs> it's coming down the line here. Let's see, we have Sophie commission on the raise. We'll take any of it as a pair stock. I think that's a great question. Are we taking any stock? We are not. 
taking any stock. And uh, Frank can speak to that further of uh, what the structure is specifically. Yeah, I believe that we're taking warrants, um, yeah. but uh, we're not taking stock in the deals. So we do have a vested interest in the success of the company, if that really is the question. Yes. Yeah. We want to see Aptera soar. <laughs> <laughs> What is the pre-money valuation on this raise? Uh, right now, it's roughly eight oh five for where we've been selling a crowdfunding stock, but this is a convertible note, uh, so it would be pinned to the next qualified uh, round. Is that correct, Frank? Yes, that's correct. All right, and oh, this is a fun one. Uh, what is the insurance companies? Will they write a policy for Aptera? Um, yeah, we, we we haven't announced anything with any particular insurance companies yet. You know, we are a registered manufacturers, so uh, uh, our VIN numbers show up in their system. But uh, we there's a couple of conversations that have uh, been had with some leading insurance companies, but we haven't finalized anything yet. But we, we haven't seen any red flags. We don't believe it's going to be a problem at all. Uh, typically, you can get insurance with any insurance company, but uh, but if it's not, in a product, oh, yeah. what's there? If it's not a product that's in the NADA, the National Association of, of Dealers, um, then you have to state the value. So you'd have to insure your Aptera for say you know thirty five thousand dollars, and your insurance policy would be stated value, not something that they have in their actuary table. So you know it may take us you know a year's worth of production. Uh, for you to be able to call up progressive and then to be able to type it in the computer and tell you what your rate would be mm -hmm. uh, on that note chris can you touch on the uh repairability of a vehicle the replacement parts etc that's one of the amazing features to me yeah you know the aptera is built very simply um so there's uh, not a lot of things to break that's what we strive for uh, you know, there's only three switches on the interior. Uh, there's the two switches to open up the doors and then a hazard switch. Uh, switches and connectors are the number one failure thing in new vehicles. Uh, we also have very simple um, and modular systems throughout the vehicle for other components. Uh, so if something were to break, we could send you a module instead of one, you know, maybe individual part and then repair that back uh, at the depot for us. Uh, we're also a right to repair company. So we'll actually give you the information um of whatever parts broke and send you a part within 24 hours um we don't think that there is a profit model to be had on the service of our vehicles electric vehicles you know are an eighth of the service of combustion vehicles and we're probably half of what a, an ev is going to be um so you know we think there's going to be very little service need in general uh, but we will help you with parts if you're in need uh, we'll also have for the population uh, dense areas or order dense areas, mobile service. Uh, so if you have a problem with your Aptera, you know, an Aptera van can come out and help you with your service need and you can be on the way. Yeah, that, that's an important point. Uh, the, the primary profit mode of dealerships is in service. And, and with a gasoline or internal combustion engine car, you need that, right? There's always oils and filters and things to change and tune up. We don't have that with electric vehicles. You have even less of it with Aptera. So there's there's no profit model in the world for Aptera of having a, a dealership, traditional dealership model that makes sense. So we've we've been talking, we're working with people, uh, some that's coming in perhaps to do help us with business development, having conversations with well-known companies that do mobile service already. And it may be as simple as, you know, papering out that relationship and have it deployed as the official Aptera service model. Yep. Beautiful. All right. There was just one question popped up there. I didn't. <laughs> There's a lot. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, that was a great one. Um, what is the projected timeline for raising the uh, 60 million? We have had a lot of interest so far, and we're just in the beginning of this launch. But uh, William and Frank, I can let you speak to that further specifically, or uh, Chris and Steve, if you have any comments. William, would you like to address the uh, volume of inquiries that we received? To uh, that? It's over 100 emails a day of it looks like qualified investors. So um, I think the timing is going to be with in the next probably 60 days, 60 to 90. I love this one. Early investors want to come back in. Yes, absolutely. Um, we're happy to work with you directly to make that happen. 
And uh, just uh, one clarification, 805 million for the pre-money valuation. That's what the last crowdfunding effort was at, yes. All right. Uh, so people want to know on the delivery date, of course, which I'm not sure if we exactly have nailed down, but we can give a, a window here. The sooner that we finalize this round with U.S. Capital, <laughs> the sooner we will deliver. Uh, this April round. <laughs> this round gets us uh, to yeah. put vehicles in your hand. Uh, but it, it really is a T minus uh, situation, whereas as soon as we close these funds, we can kick off uh, long lead suppliers for some of the tooling and equipment we'll need for a manufacturing facility. Uh, the sooner we have that equipment, the sooner we can start producing vehicles. Uh, I, I mean, yes, so that answer is going to be 2025. Yeah. And we, we've already commissioned the first ultra low volume set of production, uh, the first 50 vehicles. Uh, those are already paid for. Those vehicles are being built later this year and into Q1 next year. Uh, but so we're, we're already already starting that process. The mid 2025 uh, is the is the given timeline uh, if we close this round quickly and, and can get the ball rolling. It's right around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. Uh, this one came through a few times in different variations from different people on um, just around uh, kind of these side airbags and safety around that, which Steve spoke to releasing the, the safety reports here shortly. But if you want to touch on it again, it comes yeah. quite a bit. So first of all, it, it's going to be the world's safest motorcycle, right? Uh, it doesn't have to have any of that stuff. But we have you know, massive door uh, side impact beams that are, that are part of the structure. The vehicle has been modeled with all of those metal and composite components together. Um, and of course, the um, uh, the front airbags, uh, as as opposed to like air curtains or, or uh, side airbags or things like that, that's that's not in the in the launch plan. Um, but you know there there are people who also uh, want to choose, let's say, the fastest vehicle that's possible, like a Ferrari or something. So maybe go a Ferrari, or maybe they want to buy something that's the biggest or the safest. There's all kinds of choices out there for people. Uh, but for customers who are focused on efficiency and and powering the journey by the sun and uh, and with a, a great amount of safety, I think our vehicle is going to be a good choice. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see. This one came through a few times. We launched a repair shop and portal training. Yes. <laughs> it's, yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's something that uh, we've talked about with internally. We've talked with some local uh, schools even um, or people that uh, do vocational training. And uh, it's definitely on, on our horizon. We'd love to have a whole portal where you have videos that show you how to replace or repair uh, anything on the vehicle, uh, QR codes on the actual part that you could scan with your phone and go to the instruction sets uh, for whatever you need. Um, so, yeah. And, and that exactly. would be for outside of warranty. Like our intention is everything that's you know covered under warranty, you know, we're going to take care of that. Customers aren't going to do anything other than, you know, place a call. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's incredible. <laughs> I think it's a beautiful uh, structure you guys have put together. Um, this one will probably, well, it could be for the whole team here, um, probably Frank heavy, but just terms of investment. Um, and then someone asked also, what is a qualified investor? So the terms again, uh, it's a 24 month convertible note. The interest rate is 12% that accrues, a discount of 20% to the next financing event. And this is for accredited investors predominantly. There are a few minor slots for unaccredited, but uh, the emphasis really is on accredited investors as this is a private placement. Frank, can you touch on what an accredited investor is? Accredited investor has a million in liquid net worth outside of their primary residence and an income of 200,000 for the past two years. Uh, 300,000, I believe, uh, if it's a uh, joint uh, you know, husband and wife. Thank you. Does investing in the round improve your position of receiving the vehicle? Depends on how much you invest. <laughs> Jason, we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know people. <laughs> well, one thing I would like to add, and I'm interjecting myself here, I had the pleasure of going down and seeing the facility and literally talking to every employee they had. 
These are some of the most brilliant people I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. They could work at NASA, SpaceX, Meta, Google, Apple, um, Lockheed Martin, and they choose to work at this company because they're so passionate about it. And I have never seen that before in any other uh, industry, any other opportunity. I think you will. Yeah, we're blessed by uh, some amazing people here and people that are driven by our vision uh, to make solar mobility a reality. Beautiful. So someone, a few people put their deposit down for the thousand mile range edition. Um, is that price I place deposit be the price for delivery? Uh, you know, a lot has changed since we introduced pricing uh, two, two and a half years ago. Uh, uh, number one, inflation. Uh, so inflation has uh, certainly um, made everything in our lives more expensive from uh, from cereal to eggs to cars, um, you know, and it's affected our supply chain too. Uh, the thousand mile range uh, vehicle, you know, that's kind of 2026 uh, aspiration. So we don't even have the battery pack costed out for that vehicle yet. Uh, so we don't want to announce firm pricing on anything except, you know, our kind of launch edition vehicle when we get closer to production. Uh, so, you know, those prices will fluctuate, but what we want is for solar mobility to proliferate proliferate um, and for it to be as accessible as possible. Uh, we want to have a discussion with our community about what that pricing should be. And we want our community to feel um, happy that we are charging what we need to, to be a healthy company, uh, but not so much that we limit the growth of solar mobility long-term. So. <laughs> it's a uh, long-winded non-answer, but yes. <laughs> It is perfect. It's perfect. And then uh, that one probably about crosswinds, could it flip over? And then another person um, answered that it's, it's very aerodynamic. So no. Yeah, that, that's, that. that's actually, it's a really good point. The, the same thing that makes it low drag uh, in a headwind, if you will, also makes it low drag uh, in a crosswind. So the the vehicle just doesn't see the wind the same way a typical vehicle would. So the answer is it's very stable and crosswind. And we've tried to flip it and haven't well, been you have, successful. Yeah. Flipping <laughs> on it. yeah. So, <laughs> uh, but a 45 mile an hour curb strike test, you know, at an angle and all the skid pad tests, you know, at, at high speeds and, um, you know, because the battery pack is slung so low in the vehicle, um, it has very good uh, stability characteristics. It's, the engineers, uh, when you calculate the margin of stability of the vehicle, like how stable is it, how, how what's the propensity of any vehicle to flip over, uh, the engineers tell us that our numbers are about the same as a, a, a Volkswagen Golf, uh, which is a very popular, very fun vehicle, very stable. So uh, it's, it's as stable as a Golf. But, uh, this one made me giggle a little bit. Should I wear a helmet without? Well, you're, you're the racetrack. Yeah, <laughs> it, it is a pertinent question uh, because we're uh, certified as a motorcycle or auto cycle in the U.S. Uh, there used to be in the past laws that said, "Hey, if it's a motorcycle, you got to wear a helmet." Uh, but that has changed over the last decade. Uh, and the very few states that had weird nuances to their law like that, uh, basically, if you have a roof over your head, you do not have to wear a helmet. The, the vehicle is your helmet. Um, and if it's three wheels, you don't have to have a motorcycle's license. You can just use a regular um, automotive license. Yeah, and, and, and the helmet that you're sitting in, uh, you know, exceeds the federal, the FMVSS for roof crush of a typical passenger vehicle. So the helmet, the thing on top of your head is actually stronger than a typical passenger car. I was just going to ask you to touch on that, how the strength, uh, the crush strength of the roof uh, you guys had shared with me uh, was pretty incredible. Yeah, the the, the government, the FNBSS regulations uh, on, uh, on roof crush strength actually creeps up every year. So when we, uh, as where we are right now, you know, we just barely exceed the requirement, which is fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of larger trucks and SUVs and things like that that can't even meet it or they struggle to meet it. Uh, but with Aptera, because of its design, because of materials that we use, uh, we're able to exceed that that safety requirement. Uh, very cool to see how many people can stand on top of the Aptera um, <laughs> without injury to it. Uh, the moose test. <laughs> uh, the moose test is a, a stability test where basically you have a two-lane freeway. There's a moose in the road. You have to 
veer out of the lane to skip the moose, but then another car's coming, so you have to get back in the lane before you hit the oncoming car. Uh, it's a very uh, difficult test to pass. A lot of SUVs do not pass the moose test. I think uh, there's lots of uh, small cars that don't pass the moose test too. It was maybe created by Volvo because all the yeah. moose running around Sweden <laughs> on the road. All the Swedish moose uh, causing trouble. Uh, but yes, uh, we passed the moose test with our vehicle, and um, you know, great stability factor uh, for our vehicle. Uh, Blake brought up some stuff that maybe we should touch on um, if people haven't had questions, but, you know, we're still active in our aspirations to uh, apply for a DOE loan. Uh, and the $60 million uh, effort does kind of unlock those possibilities. Um, the Department of Energy wants to incentivize advanced manufacturing in the U.S. That is us to a T. Um, our IPO work is ongoing, and we expect that uh, if we close this round, uh, that we will uh, pursue a public path within the next 18 months. We really want to tie an IPO to the first production vehicle. So as soon as we start delivering vehicles, we would love to tie an IPO uh, uh, at that time. I saw a question about the tax credit. Uh, of course, at present, the answer is no. And you can thank Senator Manchin for that if you want to call his office and, uh, and thank him for uh, removing the language for motorcycles, uh, receiving that credit. Please feel free to reach out to his office and uh, let them know how you really feel on the matter. But uh, now that he's leaving Congress, uh, we our lobbying efforts are, are still ongoing, and we believe we can get that uh, legislation entered back in to uh, enable Aptera to, to qualify for that again. Uh, we're also, uh, we also have some tax credits from the state um, uh, for about $6 million. So uh, we do have some state support, uh, even if the federal support uh, isn't coming our way. Uh, we've also been working with foreign governments. Uh, the, the UAE has been very receptive uh, to us. They have very low energy costs. They have a great uh, industry in aluminum and glass there, um, also composites. Uh, so there's lots of possibilities there. Uh, and the Italian government, because we're doing so much in Italy, uh, might be available to help us uh, with building yeah, manufacturing those, plants and other stuff. Those are, those are two deals that are underway both in the United Arab Emirates and in Italy. I would say they're fairly mature and uh, they would bring some significant amounts of capital to the company. Beautiful. Actually, uh, to touch on Europe here, uh, people are excited in Europe yeah. and globally <laughs> for deliveries and, as well. So I can't speak yet to deliveries because we still have a few issues we have to work through on homologation for Europe. Uh, but we have, with regards to factories in Europe, we've toured probably six in Italy, and we've settled on one uh, on the outskirts of Naples. And so if that deal goes through, that's that's where those vehicles will be built. Beautiful. This one looks good. One, since it is qualified as a motorcycle, do you need a motorcycle license to operate one? Uh, you do not. If it has three wheels, then uh, you don't need a motorcycle's license. Uh, it's actually a relic of after World War II. <laughs> People come back from motorcycles from the war, and if you put a sidecar on it, they thought it was safe. So um, if it had a sidecar, three wheels, no motorcycles. Less. But it is it really is part of the uh, kind of a blue ocean category that we're in. Right. We were able to build the most efficient vehicle by choosing three wheels. And we end up in this space they call a motorcycle. Uh, but we are, you know, treating it like a car and adding airbags and everything else. So um, we are certainly not going to uh, just stay comfortable in this space. We're going to work and lobby and try and get as many advantages uh, in the space as we can. And for us, three wheels makes us more efficient. Uh, you're not dragging around a, a, an extra fourth wheel with all the weight to support it. Uh, and it's better aerodynamically for us. So, um, you know, when when uh, Steve first uh, conceived of this vehicle, it was a three wheeler, but it was a three wheeler for efficiency sake, not necessarily because it was a motorcycle or even that we knew that that motorcycle uh, classification existed. So Amazing. Oh, this is, this is a great one. And this is for everyone. Um, but it, it really touches on, you know, the raise in our current position. What is the path to profitability and how many Aptera vehicles do you need to manufacture to make a profit? It's more about the rate of production uh, and the rate of production to be profitable is about 6,000 a year. Um, and uh, Blake has an amazing uh, financial model uh, built out for us, and that's the magic number. 6,000 is the magic number. Frank is in uh, San Francisco at the Ferry Building. <laughs> you just have a beautiful Hi. background there. Uh, here's the, the size of the battery pack. Hmm. 40, yeah, it's 42 kilowatt hours usable. I think it's roughly 45. 
Oh, that's 40. Total, yeah, total 45. And there is a lot more questions, but I feel like Blake has some more queued up and <laughs> that he wants us to touch on. <laughs> no, he's he's giving us a wave off. I think we're free to. You're free. Okay. Yeah, free to proceed as you wish. Okay. There we go. Let's see. Uh, just a basic one. Does it have air conditioning? Yes. Not only does it have air conditioning, <laughs> let me tell you, it's going to have one of the most spectacularly efficient air conditioning systems ever. Uh, the, the size of these components, they are just right size for this vehicle. There's so many amazing things that this vehicle has. Uh, it's, it's got a kind of insulation on it that uh, they use on satellites, so it doesn't even heat up as much. So when you get in the vehicle, the air conditioner doesn't have to work like a traditional car, which is how most of them are sized. They're, they're, they're sized to pull down the temperature from a really hot vehicle. Our car is not going to be hot, not only from the insulation, but from the, the fact that most owners will choose to use some of their energy to pre-cool the cabin when the car thinks that you're walking up to it or getting ready to go. Steve's Nordic blood does not allow him to be <laughs> in a vehicle that's above 65 yeah. degrees. So. My, my people like it cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people yeah. like it cold. <laughs> uh, we're, still, we're still working on the warranty. It's uh, really a pass through from a lot of our supply chain. Uh, as we get closer to the start of production, we'll solidify the master supply agreements with all of our supply chain. And some of those you know, warranty pass-throughs you know, will, will dictate our, our overall warranty. So uh, we probably won't be able to announce full warranty specs until very close to delivering our first vehicles. But um, we, will, we will have a warranty. It will be kind of very standard to the industry probably. Cool. And uh, you mentioned that there were a few spots for unaccredited investors. Do we know how many spots for unaccredited investors? The spots are... Yeah, they're really slated for the friends and family of the company, um, but uh, 35 is the number. Okay. Lots of people going to try to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. I think so. <laughs> um, any other models? Yeah, from, from Francisco. Yes, there are, uh, but we're, we're loath to really show them or talk about them only because we're just laser focused on getting this vehicle in production. Uh, I mean, we're so laser focused on getting it in production. We've, we've reduced it to zero options. It's one configuration, one color scheme, one configuration. Uh, so least amount of effort to get in production. But, um, but there, there are other models, but uh, we, we just we don't want to go too far into that publicly. I would say it's maybe worth noting, and it's something that Jason Hill is working on for us, is, is different oh. variants of the three-wheel vehicle. So um, you've got the three-wheel platform that we have now. We could make it more amenable to commercial applications. Um, think of delivering food, think of checking fence lines, think of uh, people coming to check your meter, um, service people. Uh, there's a lot of people that could find a three wheel platform very useful, but it may need to take the passenger seat out. Uh, you may need to have a rear cargo hatch that's a little different to have more storage. So the next thing that'll happen for us um, is the commercial vehicle market. and. The interesting thing is that people, uh, consumers, don't usually care about the variable cost of their transportation nearly as much as fleets do. If you own a fleet of a thousand vehicles, you're very concerned with the total cost of ownership. You're very concerned with the cost of your tires, your washer fluid, your brake pads, you know, all that. And the Aptera just wins hands down compared to anything else out there. You know, it's a, it's a fifth of the cost of a Toyota Camry. Uh, so, you know, when you look at it like that, we think that the commercial applications for the Aptera could have more volume uh, for us long term than even the consumer market. So, you know, in 10 years, we could be selling more Apteras uh, to commercial commercial applications than people. And all those, all those changes that Chris is talking about are designed to work off of our current tooling. So we're not having to recapitalize uh, anything of major expense. Beautiful. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Um, we only have about three minutes left. William and Frank, do you want to highlight a few other topics? There's a lot of other questions we can ask, but I feel like I'll give you guys a, a little window here before we sign off. William, would you like to uh, chime in? Um, well, I, again, I had the pleasure of meeting the team going down there. I actually got to ride in the vehicle. Um, and just for anybody that can't tell on camera, I'm six foot four and built like a football player. Uh, <laughs> I fit in the car quite comfortably, was easy to get in and out of. 
and it was an incredible experience. Um, uh, you know, as far as safety goes, the beautiful thing is the car is so unique. Everybody pays attention to it. So that was a great safety feature to me. I'm like, wow, everybody's looking. Nobody's texting on their phone because they're looking at this very cool car. So. That's beautiful. Well, it's, there are a lot of positive uh, conversations, lots of detailed questions, which I think we'll have to answer one by one here. But really appreciate everyone's enthusiasm and incredible dynamic questions here. Um, I'll share all these materials with everyone directly via email. Um, that Docsend link does have downloadable versions of them, as well as the materials on the Aptera site. But Let's get this 60 million round done and get cars in production. I did want to address one last question that came in yep. and that is, will US capital allow IRA transfers? Um, if you have a self-directed IRA account, yes, you can invest into the offering. Awesome. Uh, those IRA investors and all the crowdfunding investors out there, thank you so much for your support. Uh, you know, I know there's probably a lot of Aptera supporters um, and people that have uh, been on our team uh, for a long, long time. Thank you so much for the support. It's gotten us to where we're at today and we can't wait to close out this $60 million round and get the Aptera in production and, and see everyone here for the big party soon. I saw the comment, Aptera will pure introversion. I love it. I love it. Thank you all. Thank you to our speakers. Thank you to the audience and everyone that made this possible today. And we look forward to all the follow-up calls. So everyone stay safe and Thank healthy. Everybody. Thanks, Vanessa. Thanks, William. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, guys.